Hello, welcome to the New Stack Makers, a podcast where we talk about at scale application development, deployment, and management. Hi, this is Swapnil Bharatiya, and we are here at DockerCon Europe 2017. Today we have with us Brendan Burns, one of the co founders of Kubernetes Project. Brendan, can you please quickly introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Brendan Burns. I'm a distinguished engineer uh, at Microsoft working on Azure uh, and also co-founder of the Kubernetes project. Uh, at DockerCon, Docker announced that uh, they will be now using Kubernetes along with Swarm. So first of all, uh, it's kind of a good move because when I look at Kubernetes, almost everybody is kind of moving to Kubernetes. Just, I think two weeks ago, uh, Cloud Foundry announced that they are doing, you know, Cloud Foundry container uh, runtime, you know. I don't know, they have changed the name of Kubo to, mm -hmm. to a new now. Uh, so, so first of all, what is your kind of, you know, reaction, you know, or, you know, I'm sure you have been working with Docker over this, but you know, in yeah. general, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, as, as we talked about a lot on stage, you know, we've, we've had a really great relationship with those folks over time. I think with any, uh, Relationship people have different opinions, and 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 we've had some differences of opinions. But you know, I'm really excited to see this partnership come together and start going forward. Because honestly, I feel like this layer of the stack should become uh, the the boring part of, of 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 what we build, and it's the tooling that we build on top, the things that that make developers more productive. That is the stuff that I'm really excited about. So I think it's a great opportunity for not just the Kubernetes community and the Docker community, really all of the container users around the world to, to see this sort of focus and, and uh, collaboration. Uh, I was talking to Solomon the other day, and, and when, when, when we look at Swarm versus Kubernetes, uh, his opinion was more like orchestration itself will become commodity. So what do you think where you know, uh, the Swarm versus Kubernetes will be going? Yeah, I think it's really true that orchestration is becoming a commodity uh, across the cloud. You look at Azure Container Service where uh, you can deploy a container orchestrator, you can deploy Kubernetes it, at, at zero cost to the end user. I mean, obviously you have to pay for the compute for the VMs that you're using, but other than that, the, the orchestration is free. I think that really points to the fact that users want to consume container-oriented primitives. Um, if you look at something like Azure Container Instances where we built that out, where people can deploy just uh, containers by themselves, um, I think it's really clear that people kind of want to, especially developers, don't, don't want to have to worry about the VMs. They just want to think about building and deploying the containers that, that, that they're building. And I think orchestration is sort of that next layer up that allows people to not just deploy their individual applications, but actually sort of integrate their applications together in a way that, that so they can coordinate and, and, and build bigger systems. Uh, depending on who you talk to, Kubernetes is still you know, kind of, you know, it's not the way Docker uses things, you know, uh, that's not the same case with Kubernetes. So going forward as Docker will be using Kubernetes, so will they be kind of influencing or, you know, what kind of, you know, engagement or contribution uh, do you want? I oh. I certainly think that they're going to come into the community and help, and, and sort of the, the analogy we use is, is to chop wood and carry water. So I certainly expect them to show up and help uh, across the board, right? And, and certainly they have done a really great job of building really compelling user interfaces that meet customers where they are and, and empower them to do really great things. And so I definitely am hopeful that um, that that'll turn out to be a really great collaboration. But I think e possibly even more important than that is, you know, Kubernetes was never intended to be the final layer in the stack. It, it was intended to be a building block that you built systems on top of. Um, and so I think what's more exciting, even more exciting than, than them coming into the community and participating in the community is actually uh, seeing what they can build on top, seeing what we can build on top together um, because I think those are going to be the things that ultimately help gain more users for the platform. I think if you look back at some of the moments um, throughout sort of developer history where uh, Microsoft built systems that radically changed the number of people who could build applications for a platform, you know, things like Visual Basic or uh, the Access Database or, or managed code like .NET, I think these are all moments where suddenly the number of people who could become developers got larger. And I think we're going through one of those moments now where containers and container orchestration are going from being 
the domain of experts to being the domain of people who, who just need to build applications. And that's honestly, to me, the most exciting part, that democratization of, of distributed systems is really the reason why I get up in the morning and, and why I'm excited about what we're going to build on top. Uh, sticking to uh, Kubernetes before we move to Microsoft, uh, as I said, you know, it's still kind of hard to use. And sure. So uh, when we look at you know, kind of future, what is the big challenge that you see for Kubernetes, which you think should be kind of as the, the community you know, user right. base is growing? Well, I mean, I, as I said, like, I think that the, I'm not sure it's Kubernetes' job to solve all of these problems, right? I think Kubernetes wants to provide a very specific set of services at a very specific layer in the stack. I think that one of the really great things that a lot of system designers do is they decide where do we stop? And it's, it's, it's almost as important, or maybe even more important, to know what you are not as it is to know what you want to be, right? And I think we have a really strong sense within the Kubernetes community about where we draw that line. And so I think a lot of the things that you're, you're talking about and you're interested in, in terms of making it more accessible, making it easier for people to compose systems, are going to come from the tools we build on top of those APIs. Just like, you know, at the bottom of an operating system, you have syscalls, but you know, a lot of people consume those syscalls through a managed language, through uh, higher level primitives that allow them to draw windows or talk to the network in, in more abstracted ways. I think you're going to see the same things happening in the container landscape, where people are going to build, and we're already seeing this, we're already seeing people start to build tools um, that provide, you know, more targeted, more tailored interfaces to container orchestration on top of the Kubernetes APIs. And I only expect that to continue. I, I think, you know, much like anything, if we are ultimately successful, I, I hope that a lot of people at some level don't necessarily even know that they're accessing the Kubernetes APIs underneath, right? Like, I think that if we build the right interfaces, people will work on those interfaces as opposed to the lower level ones. Uh, now let's talk about you know you and Microsoft. Sure. Uh, why did you kind of you know what what is the reason you joined Microsoft? You know. Yeah. No, I think this this transformation is exactly the reason that I that I was so excited about joining Microsoft. It's it's a company with a history. I would say actually possibly a unique history in the in the history of computing of enabling developer productivity and enabling people who may not have thought of themselves as application builders or developer builders to become uh, you know, people who, who, are, who, are, who are capable of building applications, right? And I think we've, we saw that, I mean, I saw that with, with friends who I went to college with who, who took Visual Basic and Access and built businesses or built consultant uh, jobs where they could build applications using those technologies, right? These technologies that, that empower people. Um, I think it's something that is has been historically. It's it's a it's it's a gap in the cloud right now. It's too hard to build applications on the cloud to build reliable, scalable applications, and so I think that history of enabling developer productivity combined with a really great public cloud is just an incredible opportunity to to empower a whole new generation and a, really a broader group of users to to build these distributed applications. So that's why I'm that's why I'm here, and I think it's a unique, the com, those that combination just doesn't exist anywhere else at any other company. And how is Microsoft consuming uh, Kubernetes internally, if at all? Uh, so certainly there are there are people who who you know build systems on top. Um, in fact, you know we uh, the Azure Container Service itself is is built on top of uh, uh, is deployed onto Kubernetes, um, but we also supply it as a service, right? So so I think I focus much more on building a service for external users, for Azure users, um, because ultimately, as big as Microsoft is, the world of public cloud is way, way, way bigger, right? So I want to build services that are useful and empowering to external users. Um, and, and I hope that by doing that, you know, I build things that are useful for, for internal users as well. So, so what is your actual role within Microsoft? Uh, so my role is to lead uh, the teams that, that focus on containers and open source container orchestration um, within Microsoft. So that, in, I mean, that includes managing the teams and making sure that we get the right people in, the people with the right skills. It includes helping set direction. Uh, it includes um, you know, actually writing some of the code myself. Um, so it's a mix of, but everything you'd expect sort of out of engineering leadership and, and technical leadership. I think there's a degree as well, and I'm, I'm really excited about trying to help Azure 
chart a direction into this into this new world and, and figuring out how do we marry all of the skills that brought us really great developer tools like Visual Studio Code with the skills of someone who's building a distributed application and knows what it takes to deploy, manage, and, and operate a distributed application at scale. I think there's a lot of people who work on development environments and there's a lot of people who build distributed systems, but there are fewer people who, who think about how they can come together. Um, and I think that's something that, that I'm pretty excited about as well. So just trying to set that direction. Great. And, and what kind of uh, engagement Microsoft, now you, Microsoft has with the Kubernetes community, what kind of contributions sure. are you making? Yeah, so concretely, um, obviously we contribute a bunch of code. You know, some of it is code to make Azure work really well with Kubernetes. Some of it is code like Helm that is a upstream open source project that, that is maintained primarily by Microsoft that makes package development easy. Uh, makes it easy to deploy and manage containerized applications on top of Kubernetes. Um, likewise, uh, this recently open source project called Draft that is aimed at the developer side. We're trying to make it extremely easy for a developer who may not have learned about containers or Kubernetes to get started with, uh, with those technologies. Um, but also beyond that, um, we participate in the leadership of a lot of the sort of open source governance and steering committees. So uh, Michelle Norale, who's uh, on my team, recently was elected to the Kubernetes Steering Committee. I was on the, the sort of bootstrap steering committee and continue to be on the Kubernetes Steering Committee. We have representatives on the boards of the Open Container Initiative, the Cloud Native Compute Foundation. Um, we engage and contribute to Docker. So uh, a Microsoft employee, John Howard, is the number four contributor all time to the Docker project. So there's a lot of different ways in which uh, Microsoft contributes um, its expertise and, and knowledge in the space. Uh, this could be a, a stupid question, but you know, uh, the way Kubernetes is being used by so many, uh, I don't want to name that project, but like, okay, OpenStack, you know, it was used by so many that, you know, they went through so many phases, you know, integrated release, then Big Tent, and now, you know, sure. they're, uh, because so many people were using, they were like trying to cater to everybody. Same is happening with you know, Kubernetes, the way it's been consumed. Uh, so are you kind of worried about this adoption and how do you want to make sure that there are checks and balances so you know you don't become bloated or you know? Yeah, so I mean, the, scaling the project has definitely, was definitely one of its challenges and continues to be a challenge, right? And I think that getting the steering committee in place that we just finished up doing, just had this election where, where Michelle was elected, um, was a big important part of that, right? Because it, without formal governance for, for one of these projects, it's hard to make sure that you strike the right balance. Um, I, I, I think we're really fortunate. We have a lot of really great people within the community who, who think a lot about these things. Um, and so I'm, I'm pretty confident that we're gonna navigate our way through them, but it's definitely the case that, you know, I, I think that this, that scale of how do you go from three people to thousands of people is definitely, especially distributed around the world, that's definitely a challenge. It's, 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 it's not an easy thing. Um, we're one of the biggest open source projects out there at this point. Um, and there's a lot of different people who have ideas. I think the one good thing that we have going for us is we've managed to really develop a, a strong sense of community and a strong sense of identity that, that I think will help us sort of move through that. I think we all, we all share the same North Star of, of making it easier for people to design and deploy distributed systems. I'm just really excited to sort of mark this moment um, and, and think about you know, what we can build on top of, of this sort of consolidation that's happening in the space. So. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. And look forward to you know, you. see you again you know, in future events. Definitely. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Listen to more episodes of the New Stack Makers at the newstack.io slash podcast. Please rate and review us on iTunes, like us on YouTube, and follow us on SoundCloud. Thanks for listening, and see you next time.